haven't I seen your face before? Haven't we crossed this bridge a dozen times or more? Didn't I stop you when you were walking out the door? Haven't I seen your face before? Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Michael McFarland, writer, rocker, biker, geek, and this is my introduction to the world via I Move, I Live online music magazine. I'm a singer-songwriter from Asheville, North Carolina, um, but I grew up in Kent, Ohio, and I just recently put out a new record called A Failed Breakup. Um, I don't know if I ever really consciously selected music as a career. Um, I mean, I'm, I've been, always been someone that's worn a lot of hats. I'm a graphic designer, I'm an entrepreneur, but music's kind of been my passion um, for a long, long time. I started, started studying uh, classical piano when I was six years old, um, and I picked up a guitar when I was about 14, and about a year after that started writing songs. And it's just kind of been the path that I've been on since then, and um, I know even if I were to ever stop aggressively pursuing music as my career, I'd never stop writing music, uh, because once I started that, I, I was kind of addicted. Yeah, there's there are definitely a lot of ups and downs along the way, and I mean, life is that way. Uh, as far as ups and downs, what comes to mind first is when I'm, when I'm out on the road, uh, I discovered Last year when I was on my first uh, really long tour, it was about 40 days on the road was what I had planned, uh, that after about 30 I started getting really, really homesick and, and you know, I missed my girlfriend and my bed and my dog, about in that order, something like that. Um, and so after, you know, after 35 days on the road, my last show was in Denver, Colorado, and I had planned five days to make the 24 hours worth of driving back home. Uh, and I left Denver at midnight after that show and drove straight through. Um, I managed to do 24 hours of driving and 27 hours total and got home just because, you know, I was done. And so so I learned that, that I can't do more than about 30 days on the road, and I don't plan tours any longer than that anymore. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of kind of what I mentioned earlier about it, it being a bit of an addiction. But there's there's one point uh, that I specifically remember. Um, I was about 17, and I was I was in a high school band at that point. And after uh, the CD release show that we had for our first full length record, a girl from the the local high school um, I didn't really know her personally at all uh, came up to me after the show and told me that uh, one of the songs that was on that CD uh, had pulled her back from the edge when she was planning on committing suicide and after after that there was no way that I could give up on doing this um, so you know I kind of hold on to that if, uh, if things start getting rough um, I, I describe my music as being rhythmic alt pop um, which you know is a term I came up with because people ask this question a lot um, the best way I could describe it is if you take like 90s alternative rock and mix it with like modern acoustic pop and classic singer songwriters, um, jam that all together and uh, and put some beats behind it and, and you start to get something along the lines of, of what I do. Um, why would someone want to go out and buy it? Uh, all of my songs are autobiographical, they're about experiences in my life, but I try to make things, uh, to phrase things in such a way that people can feel a connection to them, like they can relate it to their own lives. And uh, and so a lot of people, you know, from teenagers to people in their 60s have, have listened to the songs and said, you know, I understand exactly what you were feeling when you wrote that, and I felt that way too. Didn't you hit the way it was? Yeah, I pretty much write all of my own music. Uh, the process that I, I use to put it together, um, there, there are usually two different ways that things start. Either it starts with a basic rhythm for the song, like the backbeat for it, 
and then I, I build everything on top of that. Or there's just one line or phrase, one little turn of the melody that pops into my head and I hold on to that. I've always got my, my iPhone with me and I lock that in on the voice recorder. Um, so I have all these little snippets of songs that I could return to and, and uh, you know, each one of those could be the building block of a song. So a lot of times uh, I'll, you know, hear a rhythm and I'll, you know, start to work with that and then I'll go and consult my library of, of seed parts to the songs and, uh, and start to build something from there. Something a fan would never think about me. Um, I'm kind of an open book as far as a lot of things. You know, I, I kind of don't really hold too much back um, when I'm on stage, and I I, uh, I talk a lot about random things that happen in my life. But one thing, one thing that a fan probably wouldn't think about me, um, I fell off a ski lift when I was nine years old. Um, the new album, it's called A Failed Breakup, it's actually a five song EP, and the goal with this record was to, um, to one, tell a, a distinct story. It's about when I moved away from Ohio where I grew up, and moved to North Carolina where I now live, and the girl that I left behind, and how our breakup just didn't quite work out, and well, I ended up marrying her. Um, the, uh, the other goal was for there to be a direct correlation between between what you see on stage when I'm performing and what you hear on the record. So while it doesn't sound exactly the same uh, because I took the, the backbeats that I create on stage because the way I perform, um, I beat on the body of my guitar to, to build backing rhythms and then I loop those and I play my songs on top of that. Uh, so in the studio, producer Jason Rubel and I dissected each of those backing rhythms and built them out of different things in the, uh, in the studio environment. Um, so while it doesn't sound exactly the same, there's there's that very direct correlation between um, what happens on stage and what happens on the record. So if you listen to a song and you go to a show, you'll be able to to feel that connection. Here comes the knock at the door. The landlord he just wants more. Ten dollars a guest won't fill, but. 